Sustainable Product Standards, SPSs, are similar to other standards used by the codes. However, SPSs are used specifically to determine green and or sustainable characteristics of building materials and products. Although fairly new to the industry, there are quite a few SPSs now available. Before reliable SPSs could be developed, however, guiding parameters needed to be created. Internationally, the International Organization for Standardization ISO, has led the way in creating guiding standards. In the United States, ASTM International has assumed a leadership role in developing standards related to sustainable development. For example, ASTME 2432, Standard Guide for General Principles of Sustainability Relative to Buildings, defines in detail the three primary aspects of sustainability as environmental, social, and economic, and emphasizes the continual improvements of standards. Various standards organizations, trade associations, and other interested parties have used these guiding standards from ASTM and ISO as they develop new SPSs. These SPSs can be used in a number of ways. They can be referenced by the sustainability codes and standards. A common example is the standard NSF ANSI 140, Sustainable Carpet Assessment. Used by the industry as common practice in the specification of green products such as MTS 2006-4, SMART, Sustainable Building Product Standard. Included as part of a green rating system as a way to benchmark a particular requirement for a lead credit. Used as a benchmark for a specific product certification program. Product certification programs are used to determine the validity of the information supplied by the manufacturer. They were developed in response to green washing. When sustainable building design and the use of green products first began, many manufacturers started advertising their products' eco-friendliness. There ended up being a wide variety of environmental claims with little to back them up. It also made it difficult to compare similar products since there was no consistency in the information. Product certification programs helped solve this problem. In addition, they are typically verified by an independent group, that is, third-party certifiers, which provides additional authenticity. Examples of third-party certifiers include Scientific Certification Systems, SCS, UL Environments, ASTM International and NSF International. Examples of product certification programs include the Forestry Stewardship Council, FSC, program for wood and the Carpet and Rug Institute's Green Label program for carpet, cushions, and adhesives. FSC Certified, for instance, uses the standard FSC principles and criteria to evaluate wood forests. The wood from an approved forest is tracked as it is shipped, manufactured, distributed, and sold. Both the Green Label and Green Label Plus certification programs use the standard NSF ANSI 140. The federal government has two certification programs as well, called Energy Star and WaterSense, which use standards set by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. Manufacturers can have their products tested using these SPSs and, in most cases, use third-party certifiers to verify that they meet a specific certification program. Often this information is labeled directly on the product. FSC certified, for instance, may be stamped directly on a piece of lumber. These types of labels are known as eco-labels. Other eco-label examples include the green seal mark, Smart Certified, and Level Conformance Mark. The manufacturer typically includes this information on finished samples and product literature as well. Many of the third-party certifiers or the creators of the certification programs will also maintain a database of approved products, which can be accessed by the Internet. Be aware, however, that there are different levels of product certification programs. 
First of all, the scope of the program can range from a single product attribute, such as its recycled content or water conservation, to a multiple attribute focus. Multiple attribute examples may include toxicity of chemicals and materials, types of energy used, water quality, conservation of natural resources, and recovery and recycling of materials. More comprehensive certification programs concentrate on the entire life cycle of the product and incorporate manufacturer responsibility as well. The second thing to consider is the transparency of information. Some organizations are creating their own certification programs and self-testing products using these programs. This may not create as reliable of a process as those organizations that include input from multiple participants and third-party certification.